Hi there, I'm Dr. Karen Leggett, the Women's Midlife Specialist, and today in part four of Be a Superwoman Breast Cancer Brainiac, you're going to discover the three huge mistakes that women make that cause them to gain weight during their midlife years. Excess weight has been shown to influence the risk of developing breast cancer. In fact, obesity influences the risk of developing many forms of cancer in general by about 20% in women. This picture shows just some of the cancers influenced by obesity. Breast, ovarian, uterine, cervical, pancreatic, liver, gallbladder, stomach, colon, rectal, to name a few. You might be thinking to yourself, oh, she's talking about people who are obese. I'm not obese. But it might take less weight than you think to be considered obese by medical terms. I'll never forget the look on a face of a precious young woman when she came back to me very upset because I had given her the diagnosis of obesity. She didn't say anything at her first visit, but she came back about a week later and told me she was absolutely shocked. She had no idea that she was obese. Most people think that the term obesity represents a massive sized individual like what's on TV in the program My 600 Pound Life. No, obesity is defined as a BMI, meaning body mass index of greater than 30. Here's a chart for you to take a look at and find your own BMI. For instance, if you are five feet, four inches tall and weigh 175 pounds, your BMI is 30 and you are obese. Or let's say you're five feet, seven inches tall and you weigh 191 pounds, your BMI is 30 and you are considered obese. I like the cartoon that says, according to this BMI chart, I'm too short. So you see, obesity isn't really as heavy set as you might believe. It's not all that hard to end up with a BMI of 30 or greater by the time you're in your midlife years. So let's get started and discuss the three huge mistakes that midlife women make which cause them to gain weight. I'll start with number three and count down to number one. Number three. Poor nutrition. It won't surprise you to hear that poor nutrition fits in this slot as number three as a big factor of weight gain. There are three things that can be culprits of poor nutrition. Poor planning, spoiled taste buds, and the wrong mindset. Let's start with not having a good plan in place for eating healthy food. Poor planning sets you up for failure. And when you don't plan ahead, you commonly find yourself having to settle for something you really know isn't the best thing for you. This is pretty commonplace for many working women. Instead of having a good lunch prepared from home, you might end up eating fast food or quick meals or eating on the run. Then with the same lack of planning, it's common to end up going out for dinner too frequently. And everyone knows what that means. It's pretty hard to get a healthy, low calorie, high fiber meal in a restaurant, even when you're really careful. Planning has a lot also to do with what's in your pantry. You may have a lot of unhealthy foods in your pantry if you haven't planned ahead and shopped for a healthy food that is fast and easy to fix. One night of ordering pizza or snacking on junk food in the refrigerator can sabotage an entire week of healthy eating if you get home tired and your cupboard isn't filled with easy, healthy choices that you carefully planned long before the moment you actually need it. So plan ahead and avoid getting stuck eating yucky, fast-prepared foods. 
To help you stay away from eating me, I've got a great pantry planner guide just for you. You can download it from my website and Facebook page. Happy cooking! <laughs> the second cause of poor nutrition is spoiled taste buds and not knowing the facts about the taste buds on your tongue. You see, if you're set on eating only what you think tastes good, you might be setting yourself up for poor nutrition. The reason for this is that your taste buds only like what they know. Many women during midlife love carbohydrates like pasta, bread, and sweets. And I know you don't want to hear this because you already know it, but carbs break down into sugar and sugar just isn't good for you. Carbs and sugar increase inflammation, feed cancer cells, and cause weight gain. This just sets you up for the snowball effect because weight gain just causes more inflammation and hormone disruption, which causes even more weight gain. So you need to know about taste buds is that they are adaptable, pliable, and trainable. These little bumps on our tongue are super flexible. They don't care what you eat. They are only transmitting the signal to your brain so your brain can actually determine what type of food it is. It's your brain that decides and determines what the food tastes like. And here's the really cool thing about that. It only takes 21 days to change what your brain senses from your taste buds. That's it. By sticking with a new food or a new group of foods or spices for only three weeks, your brain recognizes sweet or salty or bitter or sour on a completely different scale. Let me give you an example that you probably have some recollection of or can relate to. Maybe you used to drink whole milk, but later heard that you should decrease your fat intake so you change to a lower fat or milk substitute like almond milk or cashew milk. And now when you happen to have a little whole milk, it tastes far more rich and creamy than you recall. Or maybe you decreased your salt intake because you heard it wasn't good for your blood pressure. And now if you used only half the salt you once used, you would dislike it and think it was too salty. But these tastes used to be normal to you. Your brain does this with sweet stuff too. The more sweet stuff you eat, the less you recognize the taste. But if you rarely eat a treat, the sweetness of the sugar is going to be powerful and even more enjoyable. So the key here is that it only takes 21 days to change your brain's perception of what your taste buds are communicating. It's pretty cool and gives you a lot of power and a light at the end of the tunnel when you're retraining your brain. Now the third and last thing that sets you up for poor nutrition is your mindset. Imagine food healing your body and what the food is doing to your body as you prepare it and eat it. If you think about how the vegetables you are washing and cutting are going to get absorbed into your body and feed each of your organs with all the healthy nutrients you need, you actually start loving the process of preparing them. And the opposite works too. When you see greasy french fries or even a juicy looking brownie sitting in front of you, you can imagine the fat traveling through your bloodstream and clogging up your arteries. And all those carbohydrates and sugar increasing inflammation in your body, and the result is a very unhappy gut. You see, that leads us into the second cause of weight gain in midlife women, poor gut health. Did you know that at least 70% of your immune system comes from your gut? And guess where your gut gets good health? From your food. 
The main thing I want you to think about regarding gut health right now is toxic exposure. Yikes! I'm going to cover toxic exposure, exposure in much more detail in the last video in this series on the risks of breast cancer, so stay tuned. But for now, be aware that your immune system is dependent on how healthy your gut is. There are only four ways to get toxins inside your body. Topically through your skin, inhaling them through your lungs, injecting them with a needle, and through your GI system by eating them. We owe it to ourselves to decrease our toxic load in all four of these ways. So eating foods that are organic and minimally processed is our best defense when it comes to protecting our gut and our immune system. And did you also know that your gut actually makes more hormones than your brain and other hormone organs like your ovaries and adrenal glands? That's right. Our gut is a powerful hormone producing organ that plays a huge role in keeping your body hormones balanced. Now, if you live by your grade school health teacher's advice and allow 60% of your food to come from carbs, your gut hormones are probably imbalanced. So this brings us to number one cause of weight gain in midlife women, imbalanced hormones. When you take a look at this picture, you can see how the advice we got in health class was pretty bad advice. And in fact, one of the reasons we have gained so much weight, excess carbohydrates cause insulin hormone and blood sugar levels to increase, which causes increased inflammation, which causes increased cortisol secretion, which causes even more weight gain. And we're back where we started on the weight gain hormone hamster wheel. I created my own system many years ago and have since taught it to many patients. And I'm still the same size I was at 20 years old. It's called the rules of three, no more than four. And basically, it's dividing up your macronutrients, which are carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, into equal amounts that you eat on an average throughout the day. So that would be 33% of carbohydrates, 33% protein, and 33% fat. The no more than four simply means if you go outside the 33% range, make sure you don't increase any one of these macronutrients to greater than 40% of your daily food intake. I know that was fast, so if that spikes your interest, you'll probably love my GI hormone program, so keep a watch out for those to learn more. So that answers a lot about the GI hormones, but what about sex hormones? Let's first put gut hormones here, but what about the sex hormones? An imbalance of sex hormones most definitely increase our risk of gaining weight as we enter our midlife years. Estrogen helps control body weight. In animal studies, estrogen decline has been shown to result in lab animals eating more and becoming less physically active. The cause of this is not really known. However, one clue is that research has demonstrated that reduced estrogen causes a reduction in the thyroid hormone production and function. This means that your metabolic rate, the rate in which you burn calories, declines as your estrogen declines. Also, as your estrogen declines, your body doesn't process carbohydrates and sugars as effectively as it once did. And both of these issues will be a result of increased fat storage, as well as create a much more difficult time for you to lose weight, as well as keep the weight off. However, estrogen hormone therapy can increase 
your metabolism. And when I say the words estrogen hormone therapy, many women get concerned before they should and end up doing themselves more harm than good. You see, it is not the bioidentical estrogens that are so bad for you. In fact, the conclusion of the Women's Health Initiative study showed that estrogen actually decreased a woman's risk of breast cancer for seven years after menopause. What is important to realize is there is a difference between estrogens that your body produces and estrogen-like substances that come from other sources. The estrogens that your body produces are actually not nearly as critical as the outside sources you are being exposed to every day. You see, we are bombarded by artificial hormones in our dairy and meat products and by something called xenoestrogens. Hormones given to our dairy and meat food sources to help them grow faster and get more plump make their way back to guess where? Us, our bodies. I highly recommend that if you drink or eat dairy, you look for hormone-free sources, better yet, grass-fed animal sources. So what about the other word I said, xenoestrogens? What are xenoestrogens? Xenoestrogens are toxic substances we are exposed to that mimic estrogen and come from our food and the environment. One example of a toxic xenoestrogen is the pesticide Roundup that makes its way into our food during non-organic farming methods. And Roundup is just one example, there are many. BPAs, which stand for bisphenol A, are also xenoestrogens. More on xenoestrogens in our last video of this series, so stay tuned. So before I say goodbye, there is another way our bodies hold on to estrogen that you need to be aware of. You see, fat cells actually produce estrogen, period. Fat cells increase our estrogen levels, and this is one of the reasons obesity increases a woman's risk of breast cancer. This estrogen production coming from fat cells alter the balance even more between estrogen and progesterone, and the progesterone to estrogen ratio is thrown off balance resulting in an estrogen dominance. It's bad enough that progesterone starts to decline 10 or more years before estrogen starts to decline, and it's really problematic when a woman is overweight and her progesterone to estrogen ratio is affected even more. I've been helping women balance their hormones for over 15 years. I've seen how difficult it is for women to get good, competent help. I know how few resources you have to help you balance your hormones with or without using bioidentical hormones. I know all about the blank stares you get from your doctor when you ask about hormones as they hold on to that exam room door handle, what one of my nurses calls the backward shuffle. So this is my mission, ladies, to empower you to balance your own hormones without prescriptions, with or without bioidentical hormones, to help you decrease your risk of breast cancer, feel amazing, lose weight, get your sexy and confidence back. And I'm here to give you support and a community of women just like you and me, because no one can do it alone. We've just started my Master Hormone Madness program in this last week, so if you missed signing up, don't worry, because I'll be offering it again next year. So keep watching out for registration. Keep learning from these videos and sign up on Facebook or our website now so you don't miss out. And also, make sure you get the download for your pantry planner guide so you will always be prepared to fix a healthy meal when you come home late and have to decide quickly what to prepare. I hope you learned something from this video. Now do me a favor, scroll down, leave me a comment, let me know you're here and if this was helpful to you. See you soon. Bye.